Hey guys, my name is Demas Rosalie and in this video I'm going to give you a basic rundown of what keyframing is in Adobe Premiere Pro. So keyframing is a great way to easily animate your videos from one point to another point. The most basic forms of keyframing are position, scale and rotation and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. However, you can literally keyframe most or if not all of the effects and features on Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's now jump on the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's drag this clip that we've been using quite a few times in this series into Adobe Premiere Pro and cut it to only the part we want to use. To cut, I just drag the front of the clip to where I want it to start at and do the same to the back of the clip as well. So let's now try some keyframing. At the top of the effect controls panel here, there are these options and every option that has a stopwatch icon can be keyframed. So first, let's try keyframing the scale. So click the stopwatch icon next to scale and a diamond should appear at the beginning or where your cursor is at. Then I'm going to slide the cursor a bit to the right and then just type in 150 for scale to make the clip bigger. This will automatically create another keyframe which you can then drag to the end of the clip. So now the video zooms in gradually from start to end. As you can see as the video progresses, because we're zooming in, I'm not centered anymore and so we can fix that using the position keyframing. So again. Click the stopwatch icon next to position at the beginning and then start moving the cursor to the right until I'm not centered anymore. At the last point where I'm still centered, you can click this diamond icon to create a keyframe and lock it at the same position as the previous. But then as the video moves on and I move more towards the right, you can just slide this X axis number to the left so that I move to the left as well. Then drag this keyframe all the way to the end. So now I'm always centered and this is made possible by keyframing the scale and position. Next, let's try opacity keyframing. This will allow you to fade your videos in or out. So again, go to the beginning of the clip and click the stopwatch icon next to opacity. Then move the cursor a bit to the right and then click this diamond button to create a second keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe and then slide the opacity down to 0%. This will create a fade in effect and then you can do the same to create a fade out effect at the end as well. Alright, so now you understand the basics of keyframing, let's just try it on a few different effects. So in the effects tab, I'm going to search for Gaussian Blur and then drag it onto the clip. Then I'm going to click the stopwatch icon next to Blurriness, move the cursor to the end and then I just type in 30 to make it more blurry at the end. So now your videos will blur over time from 0 to 30. You can keep going and keep adding multiple keyframes in between as well if you wanted to. I'm just going to do it here to show that it's possible. As you can see, it's just jumping from blurry to non-blurry to blurry to non-blurry and so on. You can use these left and right arrows to jump to the previous or next keyframes more accurately. You could also change the color grade of a video clip as time passes as well. So at the beginning of the clip, I'm just going to change the sliders here on the right side on the Lumetri color panel. I'm going to make the colors a bit extreme just for this example. When you start moving the sliders, this Lumetri color option should appear in the effect controls panel. And look at all the stopwatches there. Slide the cursor to the right and color grade how you would like the video to end. And that's it. Super simple, right? You can see the colors changing from the start to the end just by doing one keyframe. Alright, so I just want to show you one last thing, and this is how I made my most viral Instagram Reel video, which also did very well on TikTok as well, as it was quite interactive. So I've dragged this hyperlapse clip I shot of the Rainbow Bridge in Tokyo onto the timeline. I'm just going to cut the beginning and the end of the clip, and I'm just going to change the frame size to 1080 by 1920 so it fits a vertical frame and speed up the footage as well so it fits within 15 seconds. Then to fill the frame, I just increase the scale. So next, I move my cursor about 5 seconds into the clip and hit the rotation stopwatch keyframe icon. Sometimes the end of the clip doesn't show so you just have to adjust the window here a bit to make it appear. 
But then I go to the end of the clip and then I type in 359 degrees to create a second keyframe making a full rotation. As you can see when the frame is rotating the corners become black as the clip is too small. And a quick way to fix this is to use the scale keyframing to make the clip zoom in over time so that the black corners disappear. You should try this out for yourself and even add a cool song behind it as well. And that's it, here's the final result. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you've now increased your skills to create more engaging content for social media. Make sure to check out the other videos in this Premiere Pro for social media series and come say hello on my social channels too. See you in the next video. Bye!